Disney's Alice in Wonderland. Alice was perched on a tree branch as her older sister read her lessons aloud. All of a sudden, Alice spotted a rabbit. He was all dressed up and was running at full speed. Oh my, I'm late, I'm late, I'm late, he cried as he looked down at his oversized pocket watch. Quickly, Alice followed him. The white rabbit headed down a dark hole. Without thinking, Alice followed him. Her dress parachuted and she floated down, down and down. After a long fall, she finally touched the ground. She saw the white rabbit running. Alice tried to catch up, but she was in a very long hallway. She soon lost sight of the rabbit. Alice discovered a little wooden door down by the floor. Suddenly, the doorknob began to speak. You're much too big, he said. You'll have to drink from that bottle on that table. Alice drank from the bottle. She drank, shrank, and shrank until she was even smaller than the bottle and walked through the door. On the other side of the door, Alice called for the rabbit. Instead, she bumped into two roly-poly little men who introduced themselves. There is no white rabbit here, but we are Twiddledy and Twiddledum. At your service. They began to dance and twirl around her. Alice walked a long time until she reached a charming house. She discovered that it was the white rabbit's house. He sent Alice inside to fetch him a pair of gloves and a fan. When Alice got to the top of the stairs, she found a box of cookies and tasted one. She grew until her arms and legs poked out of the windows. There's a monster in my house, shouted the white rabbit. Alice was stuck. She spotted the rabbit's garden from the window. Alice plucked a carrot from the garden and bit into it. She began to shrink until she was back to her normal height. She quickly exited the house. Just then, the rabbit remembered his appointment, uh-oh, and took off in a hurry. Woo! Alice was in a very strange place. Butterflies and dragonflies fluttered around her, and some of the flowers could speak. She was really in a wonderland where everything was different than the world she lived in. I wonder, I wonder if I'll ever get home, as she continued on her way. Then, Alice noticed smoke swirling above the tall grass. There, on a mushroom top, sat a caterpillar smoking a long pipe. Alice told the caterpillar that she wished to be a little bigger. The caterpillar told her that on one side of the mushroom, it would help her grow. But Alice would have to guess which side. She took a chance and bit into a piece of mushroom. Alice grew so quickly that her head surpassed the treetops. All this growing and shrinking was making her tired. I wish to be real height, she said. Alice remem remembered that she still had a few pieces of mushroom left in her pocket. She ate one and shrank back down to her normal, normal size. She kept a few pieces with her just in case she would need them later. Alice heard singing, but she couldn't see anyone around her. Out of nowhere, a mouth appeared. Then, two eyes. Finally, the body of the Cheshire Cat came into view. If I were looking for the white rabbit, I would ask the Mad Hatter and the March Hare, he suggested before disappearing. Alice continued through the woods. Soon afterward, Alice reached a clearing where a long table was set for tea. The March Hare and the Mad Hatter sat at the table. The Mad Hatter explained to Alice that everyone had a birthday once a year, but that there were also 364 unbirthdays to celebrate. That day, they were celebrating an unbirthday and invited Alice to join them for tea. As the March Hare poured the tea, he bumped into the Mad Hatter, spilling tea on his vest and bow tie. The two began pouring tea on one another while a mouse, who was half asleep, recited a silly poem. 
This is the most ridiculous tea party I have ever attended, said Alice. I'm going home. Alice continued walking through the forest until she found herself in a garden full of rose bushes. Three gardeners, who were shaped like playing cards, were painting the white roses red. They told Alice that the Queen of Hearts only liked red roses and explained that someone had accidentally planted white roses. Now they were painting them red to avoid angering the Queen. At that moment, a long row of card-shaped soldiers filed out before the Queen. Everyone stopped to watch the procession, including Alice and the White Rabbit, who was the Queen's trumpeteer. Everyone seemed to fear the Queen, even the King. The Queen suddenly stopped in her tracks. Who painted my roses red? She cried furiously. Someone will be losing their head. When she saw Alice, the Queen asked her if she knew how to play croquet. She was pleased to learn that Alice could indeed play and ordered her to play around. It was a strange game. The balls were hedgehogs and the mallets were flamingos. Alice quickly realized that the queen was cheating to win. Each time the queen hit the hedgehog, the crowd would cheer. When it was Alice's turn, she had trouble keeping her mallet from flying away. Meanwhile, the Cheshire Cat reappeared. He tied the ham to the queen's dress, to the flamingo's beak, and vanished. As the queen played the winning shot, she fell headfirst on the ground. Everyone laughed, <laughs> even the king. Red with fury, the queen blamed Alice and ordered that she stand trial. The guards immediately brought Alice before the court and the queen announced the beginning of the trial. Alice's witnesses weren't very helpful. The March Hare and the Mad Hatter entertained the court with their silly songs. Alice knew that if she wanted to escape, she would have to do it herself. Just then, she remembered the piece of mushroom in her pocket. She took a bite and grew taller than everyone in the room. Everyone was frightened of the giant Alice. The guards ran for the doors and the queen ordered that all persons more than a mile high must leave the court immediately. Before she left, Alice turned to the queen and scolded her. As she spoke, Alice slowly began to shrink down to her normal size. When she had finished, the queen ordered the, her guards to capture her, but Alice escaped through the back door and ran as fast as she could. When Alice thought she was safe at last, she realized that she was caught up in a labyrinth. She could hear the footsteps of the guards who were searching for her. How will I get out of here? She asked herself. Then, suddenly, she had only one desire, to forget everything and go to sleep. Alice could hear the queen yelling in the distance, but the sound grew more and more faint. She glanced over her shoulder to see the Mad Hatter, March Hare, White Rabbit, and the Queen of Hearts chasing her. But they all seemed very far away. It sounded as though they were calling her name. Alice! Alice! Alice, wake up! Will you kindly pay attention and recite your lesson? Alice's sister asked as she shook her awake. Alice told her sister all about her strange dream as they walked back from home. To enjoy more tea. Tootakoo!